Welcome back everyone to Garage Time. Mac is still down and out. I've been waiting for new parts to arrive for both sides, replacing the bump stops, which were mutilated as discovered last time. I'm gonna replace not only the bump rubber, which was destroyed, but the entire strut. The left front strut was blown out. This is the new strut from Bilstein. This installs in the strut this way. And this is just the dampener or shock that really provides the feel when you're driving your car. And I'm not one just to swap parts and throw them in. I'd like to sort of understand a little bit about each component. This is the B6 version. Um, there's a B6, B8. B6 is the softer of the two. And of course, these are for the front. So because my car is so light in the front, I wanted the softer dampening. Um, but I wanna try to measure at least a little bit how much force this generates and how much friction or stiction there's involved in the shaft. Cause it feels like quite a bit when I'm just moving it by hand. I gotta use the floor to compress it. But I'm gonna connect this to my load cell and make kind of a shock dynamometer, uh, not an official one, just something to get a few data points to know what the forces are like in both compression and in rebound. Mm -hmm. This is what I've been busy making. This is just a, a piece that slides here onto the end of the, this is the old cartridge, it slides on the end. And I didn't quite get this hole position in the right place, but it will lock onto this little circle here cut out on the shaft. So that goes through and then there's a pin that locks it in place. And instead of using the original roll pin, my hole's off a little bit. So I have to just use a smaller thing. What I'm using now, I have to use something like this. I'm just using this nail at the moment. And if I push this in hard enough, it will capture the end of this. So that captures it on here. I can attach my load cell onto that end. And then I have something on this end too. I just welded a bolt onto the end of two real thin nuts. And so this will thread on the upper part of the strut cartridge. This will thread onto the bottom. So now I can do some pushing and pulling and see what kind of force this thing generates based on the velocity. And this is the old strut, and if I operate it in this direction, it seems sort of reasonable. This is how it's installed in the car. When I operate it in this direction, which you never would in the car, it's completely different. So I think some of the oil's leaked out of this one. Right, this is the new one. And it's really quiet. I don't hear any bubbling or gurgling when you actuate it, but it does take more force to push it down. I want to be certain that I got the non uh, sport version. So I just want to test it and compare. I'm ready to test now. I got the load cell attached, a little handle there on top. This is stuff I already had. You know, I used this load cell when I did some strut bar testing and also when I replaced the front bushings on the suspension arms. I uh, used that to measure some of the resistance due to the rubber bushings. And I've also spent a few minutes here getting my, uh, my setup so I can collect this data and put it into the computer. Okay, the two things I'm looking for are the force that the shock generates as a function of the velocity in which you move it. So I'm going to be pushing down at various speeds and recording the force. Now I have the load cell attached to the, the shock but I don't have, it's a linear transducer or something to measure the position. But what I can do with the camera is I can monitor the speed using the camera. And there's some physics software that allows you to track certain pixels and measure the velocity that way. So it's gonna be done in combination with the load cell and the camera. I'll show you. Slow speed, go. Medium, go. Go. This is the video tracker tool. You can see those red markers tracking each pixel as the shock travels down. 
it plots the position in the y-axis and the velocity here is average of about seven. This graph shows the force from the load cell and in this particular speed, it was like a medium speed, that generated about 90 pounds originally and then it's tapered off to about 80. I wasn't exactly even and for the extension, here's the apparatus I tied to my ceiling to pull down. The shock results are in and uh, I plotted the compression characteristics and the extension characteristics and it sort of makes sense to me. It was a worthwhile effort, I think, for my purpose and it's just hard to get data from Bill Stein or any of the other shock companies as to what these things are actually performing like. You can pay for services, take it to a shock dyno and do all that. But for a stock shock, I didn't really feel like doing that. So I did my own kind of human DIY dyno technique on that. And I think it falls within the range that I was expecting. There is like a 55 pound gas pressure in the cartridge. That's the force required to overcome the gas pressure. And there's about a 10 pound uh, friction in the seal. So each time you start and stop the shock, it's like a 10 pound effort on that. So that's you know pretty significant, but typical with an OEM replacement. A performance shock that's rebuildable would probably have a little bit less friction in it. Plus you get some adjustability. And I think that's what I'm gonna be leaning towards in the future. But it's good to know what this shock is like right now. You know, one of the interesting things when I measured the compression, I did see a digressive nature in the performance as you go up in shock speed, you do actually see less uh, force uh, coming in. So that's something that a lot of people aspire to. Bill Stein might have included that in this shock as just current technology. I, I'm not really sure how that works, but at least I was able to figure out what I'm putting on my car. All right, time for a test ride. I got both struts in and of course the rear shocks in. Let's see what it's like. So we'll look for some bumps, make some turns. Try to get the chassis to roll a little bit. See if I can find a different street. This is Main Street, right by the police station. So kind of hit the brakes in that turn, trying to transfer as much weight to the front left. We'll see how much it goes down. It's pretty hard on the brakes. guy in the dune buggy just waved back, which is awesome. <laughs> 